Hi everyone, this is Carl for today in Tokyo. In Tokyo, with Carl. I'd like to address Pat Robertson. Sir, you've tried your best throughout your career to bring blessings to people. And for that, for your passion involved in that, you're to be commended. But it's time as hard as it may be at your advanced age, because that's where it gets harder, to face the facts about religion and God. I've thought about this a lot. I grew up in the same country you have. I was raised a Christian, and I'm now an atheist Buddhist. The only benefit to a religion such as yours, or to the other theisms, is it gives people some hope when they die. For those of us who understand what the neuroscientists and the biologists are saying, the brain is active after death for 10 to 20 minutes, provided the brain hasn't been disassociated or destroyed. And so if you have any conscious thought, you're knowing that you're dying. That's shocking, I suppose. Unless you steep yourself in the idea that you won't know that you're dead, as the comedian Jim Jeffries says, or as the neuroscientist Sam Harris suggests and others, it's going to be a painful thing. So if people who have convinced themselves of this delusion that you're going somewhere after death without the benefit of a cerebral cortex or a cardiovascular system to feed it, then it's a, it's a horrifying prospect. But you see, the benefit of knowing that there's nothing after death is what can make life so much more meaningful and it takes away all of the zealotry involved in obscene nationalism, jihad, and Christian fundamentalism. I understand that you've probably been tempted to turn me off if you haven't turned me off already, but I want to get more to the point because I've heard you say crazy things ever since 9-11 and what you said recently about God... Uh, getting rid of the nation or the vomiting out of America because of LGBT. Listen, whatever you believe about the origin of the universe, that it was done by an impossible, omnipotent being that existed outside of the framework of space and time, doesn't interfere with biology and science. People are born with their sexual identity. They don't choose it. And I'm sure you've heard this ad nauseum. It isn't because it's a convenient ridiculous retort. It's because it's true. You don't choose your sex. So you can't be blamed for the sex you've been born with. That's it, man. There's nothing else. And even if I still wanted to delude myself into believing that there was a creator of the universe, which if you think about it, if you read the likes of Bertrand Russell, you realize it's absolutely impossible for a being outside of existence to create existence, from what would he have made the universe? And abiding by what laws? And if there were such, he would be bound by them, which would not make him God. But let's just say you are childish enough, I'm sorry, but that's what it requires, not growing up. If you're childish enough to accept that paradigm, it doesn't change the biology. You submit to biology. You must believe God created your biology. Well, God, if he's responsible for that, he made the system which created evolution, an undeniable fact of reality, a scientific law, with mountains and mountains of evidence. Similarly, the logic of a person being one sex or another is not the person's decision. But that's the lie you have to keep telling yourself in order to believe your biblical narrative. I won't get into how insane it would be for a compassionate God, a God of such intelligence that it could create an entire universe, could be so cruel as to subject people to the sins that the Bible suggests that people are subjected to and guilty of without their own volition. In the very least, no matter what you believe or think is true, against reality, against common sense, against physics and chemistry and evolution, you couldn't believe that it's a person's responsibility to choose his or her sex. 
Can we choose our species? Can we choose the planet of origin upon which we evolve? What you say makes no sense physically or even morally. So you must believe in an immoral God. I beseech you before you die, embrace truth. Stop the lie and certainly stop injecting your venomous, ridiculous ideas upon the vulnerable Americans who still depend on such crazy ideas. We all could live more loving lives if people like you would stop with the ridiculous talk. I wish you well.